Oh boy, strap in folks because we're diving headfirst into one of the wildest enigmas of Adventure Time, the mind-boggling prize ball guardian. I mean seriously, what's its deal? Why are there candy folks snoozing inside? What's with the living quarters stashed in there? It's like an endless rabbit hole of unanswered questions. But hold your horses because today we're going to unravel this mystery. Before we start splashing around in the deep end, let's rewind and have a gander at the few rare moments where the prize ball guardian actually rocks up in the series. First time we catch a glimpse of this bad boy is in the episode Grable's 1000 Plus where it's showing off as this souped up, tricked out version of the Gumball Guardians. And boy, is it not just standing guard, but also doubling as a mobile living quarters for the Candy Kingdom. This hunk has a boxy noggin packed with candy citizens, all cozy in prize containers. And that's how it scored its name, Prize Ball Guardian. It's sky high, sports a dark pink getup, and even totes a boomerang slash blaster on its waist. Take note, it's always lone wolfing. It's just our Prize Ball Guardian who comes to snag Cubert, mistaking him for Starchy. And there ain't nobody else in sight. Tuck that little piece of information away for later, cause it's gonna be big. Also, did you catch that when Cuber scooped up and shuttled to the living area, they breezed past this indoor rec area that's all dark and unused. It's another curveball thrown into this crazy mystery, folks. And that is pretty much all the prize ball guardian action we get in this episode. Other than the fact it goes kaboom, thanks to Cuber's grables going off like the 4th of July fireworks. Then, we get another peep of our guardian in the big old finale, come along with me. The cameo's short, but sure me and Beth chirp up that the prize Prize Ball Guardian's back in town, which means they've caught sight of it before. Only this time, it's rocking up with a souped up banana guard who's packing a jetpack, a double dome, and a blaster. Now, remember that piece of information I told you to tuck away about our Guardian not hanging with anybody else? Well, folks, this is where it pays off. It sets up a timeline. Why the heck is that pimped out banana guard there? Because after Cuber turned the Prize Ball Guardian into fireworks show with his Grables, it needed some extra muscle. So Grables 1000 Plus lands before the series grand finale come along with me on our future timeline. But hey, that's about all was served up in the actual series itself. Now it's high time we rolled up our sleeves and took a wild leap into some sweet, sweet speculation. Let the theorizing begin. Kicking off with the big fat question that's been looming over us like a giant elephant. Why are all the candy peeps holed up inside the prize ball guardian? And where the heck is Princess Bubblegum? Well, strap in folks, because I reckon I've got answer to these head scratchers. First up, where's our gal Princess Bubblegum? What if I told you that we actually catch sight of her in the snazzy new intro sequence of the grand finale come along with me. No kidding, she's right there, front and center in the very first moments. Did you catch it? That's right. Those are her bubblegum pink mitts locked up behind those icy bars. But how can I be so confident? Well, the brains behind the show themselves have let slip that every elemental gets a shout out in the new intro sequence. And sure enough, we catch sight of each and every elemental in the intro. Patient St. Pim's right there at the very start, still in deep freeze. We see the new fire and slime elementals squaring off, and the counter lump elemental makes an appearance too. But guess who we're missing? The candy elemental, which means those pink hands we spot at the start have got to belong to Princess Bubblegum. Bingo. Next up, we see someone's on the hunt for her. And who's this mystery someone you ask? You guessed it, folks. It's our gal Marceline. Looks like Marceline and Princess Bubblegum are still kicking it a cool thousand years later, which totally adds up. But hold up. How can we be so sure that's Marceline? Well, buckle up because here's the scoop. First, the thing that this person's riding is none other than the duck rock that popped up for the first and only time in the season Season one's evicted episode. You know who else made their debut in that same episode? Bingo, Marceline. It's wildly strange that this minor character gets a callback in the finale's intro of all things. Second, if you hit pause on the intro when the mysterious figure breezes by, you'll spot that the telescope they're peeping through is engraved with two letters, an M sitting on top of an A. Now who in this wild and wacky world could possibly still be around and just so happens to have the initials M and A? Nailed it. Our immortal lady, Marceline Abadir. Third, and finally, you'll notice that this person's all wrapped up in a baggy coat, snow pants, and mittens from top to toe. That's a getup only a vampire would need to rock out in the sunshine, aka our girl Marceline. Also, the red boots that she's wearing is something that Marceline also wears in her debut episode Evicted. So if Princess Bubblegum and Marceline are still very much alive and kicking, why is her kingdom all kinds of messed up? And why the heck has she stashed all her subjects inside the prize ball guardian, presumably in some sort of cryostasis state? Well, honestly, it's not as wacky as you might think. In fact, we've seen this theme popping up again and again in Princess Bubblegum's life. That overwhelming feeling of not being in control. And the episode Varmits shines a big old spotlight on this. In this Adventure Time episode, we see Princess Bubblegum and Marceline team up to take down these pesky creatures known as Varmits that are causing a whole load of trouble for PB's new digs, a humble pumpkin patch. But the juicy center of this episode is PB's emotional meltdown, feeling the sheer weight of everything she's lost 
last, she pours her heart out to Marceline, confessing how her diehard dedication to her kingdom led to her losing it all, even driving away her nearest and dearest. This emotional outpouring is a rare moment for PB and gives us a peek into the deeper layers of her character. She's wrestling with the loss of her kingdom and her struggle to balance her duty and her personal life. This emotional heart-to-heart -heart is a pivotal moment for PB. She doesn't just acknowledge her losses, but she starts to see the lessons she can learn from them. This opens the door for her relationship with Marceline to spark back to life, marking a mega moment of growth for both of these characters. I reckon that Princess Bubblegum, tucking her candy citizens away inside the prize ball guardian, was her way of finally nailing that tricky balance between her relationships and her royal duties. I'm betting those living quarters we see are where PB and Marceline are living it up, while also giving PB control over all her candy citizens. Because even though the living space is dark, it doesn't really look abandoned. In fact, there are still books scattered around the room. I've got a hunch that this was PB's master plan to finally get a handle on her kingdom, while also keeping her bond with Marceline going strong. So we've been doing some noggin scratching, and we reckon that Princess Bubblegum might have used the prize ball guardian as a safety net for her kingdom. But there's a big old question still hanging in the air. What was the tipping point? Let's swivel our attention to a major game changer. The Ice Crown. Yeah, you know the one. That ancient doodad that turned the plain old Simon Petrikoff into the wacky ice king. This ain't just some trinket. It's a force that has shaped the entire Adventure Time saga. Could the Ice Crown had set off this chain of events that led Princess Bubblegum to make her drastic decision? What impact did it have on Ooh's future timeline? Alright folks, let's get our adventure boots on. We're about to take a deep dive into how the Ice Crown changed Adventure Time's history forever. Brace yourself as we unearth the ferocity story of this magical item and its effects on the land of Ooh. We've got more mysteries to crack open, so stick around. But as always, stay adventurous.